for you tonight. Congratulations. You have been invited here because your government believes you are athletic quality for the Olympics. You will be entered into the team of Olympians. You will be training. You will be preparing. And when the next Olympics comes, you will run, you will jump, you will swim for your country. And you go, oh, what an honor. Wow, my country has selected me. And you have f four years to prepare. And you say, I don't need four years. I'm going to enjoy myself for three years, and then I'm going to train for the last year. Do you think you will ever make the Olympics? How about if you went for, for three and a half years? All the pizza you wanted, all the ice cream you wanted, all the, uh, all the milkshakes you wanted, everything that's so nice, you can lie in bed and enjoy late times, and sleep late, not sleep, and then get up in the morning late, and just enjoy life. And suddenly you realize, the Olympics are only six months away. I better start training to be a, a weightlifter, a bodybuilder. In six months, do you think you could, you could become a world Olympic athlete? Now, what's going to happen on the world requires much better training than Olympic athletes get. The final crisis that's about to happen will require you to have such strong spiritual muscles that no matter what the crisis is, it will not shake you from your confidence in God. Are you ready for that day? Do you think you're ready? I'm not. Are you ready? Some of you act like, maybe I am, maybe I'm not. What if everything you... What if everything that you had in your comfort zone was taken away from you? Your family? Your freedoms? Your liberties? Your comfort? Your food? What, 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 if, you were, what if you were starved to death? What if you were put in a concentration camp and not given any food until you died? Would you, would you actually be able to say, Lord, I trust you so much that no matter if I go hungry, have you ever really been that hungry? How many of you here have gone without eating for a whole week? Anybody? For a whole week. You have for a whole week. I haven't. Okay. What, what if you were left without water? You know, uh, in the Second World War, in one of Hitler's concentration camps, somebody escaped. And as punishment, the captain called the people together just randomly. You, 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 11 of you, come forward. Because one of, your part, one of your companions escaped, you will be punished. You are sentenced to be put into this. And it was a, there was a, 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 a steel building out in the middle of the yard, in the middle of the campus, of the, of the, of the compound, prison compound. The sun was very hot. They called it the oven. And they said, you are sentenced to be put into the oven until dead. The man, one man cried and said, but I have children. So a priest came forward and said, I don't have any children, I'm single. Let me die in his place. So the, so the captain said, okay. Sent the man back and they put the, the priest there in the, in, in, the, in the place of that prisoner. They locked 11 men into that box for over a week. When they went in a week later, they found everybody dead except the priest. He was dying. For 11 days without water. In an oven. Sweating. No food, no water. They finally injected him with a chemical and killed him. And he died. But the story of his bravery, the story of his gift of life to the other man, goes on till today. But I, 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 I ask myself, would, do I trust God enough to go hungry and thirsty until dead? I suspect most church members would leave right away. There are several stories that make me think that. In Argentina and in Peru, communist guerrillas came into a church and told everybody, throw your Bibles down and stomp on them. And those that did not throw their Bibles down and stomp on them were killed. Only we discovered that 
from the story that only about two or three persons in the whole entire church were willing to give their life. That's not a very good ratio, is it? What if tonight somebody came in right now and said, you either, you either curse God and throw your Bible down and jump, stomp on your Bible or else you will be shot. And sure enough, this one is shot and that one is shot and that one. And you say, but, but my life, uh, what would you do? You see, if the, if the percentages are correct, maybe only one or two of us would actually be willing to die for Christ. That's not a very good percentage. But that reflects pretty well, pretty close to what reality is. So, let me ask you another question. Are you ready to face the final crisis? Silence, right? No. The answer is, are we ready? Are we ready? No. Let me ask you again. Are we ready? Okay. Now let's find out what's about to happen. And then we can start preparing because it's a matter of trusting God. If we can't trust God now, we will not trust Him when the crisis comes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you a few, a few little si special um, selections from the part that's at page 155 and on. It says religious liberty. It says here, It is on the law of God that the last great struggle of the controversy between Christ and his angels and Satan and his angels will come. It will be decisive for all of the world. On what is it going to be? On the law. On the law of God. Did you know that most Adventists don't keep Sabbath very well? Huh? Have you been convicted that you should do better, like I have? But yet that's the final decision. The final test will come on the Sabbath, on the law of God. And if we can't even keep the Sabbath well during peacetime, how are we going to be doing it during persecution? Do you understand? We have a long ways to go yet, don't we? If we can't keep Sabbath well now, what would make us suddenly keep Sabbath well tomorrow? It says here, One disaster will follow upon the heels of another, and those who make void the law of God will point to the few that are keeping the Sabbath of the fourth commandment as the ones who are bringing wrath upon the world. Now, nobody wants to be considered an extremist or a terrorist. Why? Because we have laws to deal with that. Why? If you are an extremist or a terrorist, we arrest you, we take you, we can torture you, we can kill you, according to the U.S. government. We can execute you. We can take away all legal rights for a lawyer, all rights for privacy. We can do anything we want to with you because we suspect you. You're a suspect. And when disasters follow one after the other and they're looking for somebody to blame, you know what happens when they blame a small group of people? The anger of the rest builds up because all you have to do is focus on somebody. Now, in, in Guatemala some years ago, there was a lady that went down to adopt a baby. Now, she was single. I mean, she was by herself. Her husband was in the States. She was living she was there in the country, renting in a little hotel while she did all the paperwork. Sometimes it takes a month or two for parents to adopt a baby and go through all the paperwork and get it all right. Somehow, she was going through a village and somebody got it into her head. I don't know who, but they said, that's the baby, that my baby that was stolen. It was discovered later that it was not the case. But somehow the person who accused her felt like that baby was the baby that she had lost. Well, very soon there were some indignant people and it began to form a crowd and, and the lady didn't know what to do so she went to the police station. They came and banged on the police station door and said, we demand that lady come out here. And the police didn't know what to do so after there was enough people, they went out the back door and left her by herself. She went into the bathroom and locked herself up and they broke into the police station, they banged down the door of the bathroom, they drug her out and they beat her to death. And then they discovered the little baby they didn't even know who it was. It was the wrong baby. The lady who had accused, they said, well, I thought it was my baby. It isn't. But they still killed the lady. Now, think of when, when a crowd be, decides to do something. They don't think. They just act like wild beasts. 
And what, what would happen if there's rapid disasters in the world? One.